here we are at Cathedral Park uh, in St. John's under the beautiful bridge here. And we've got two historic figures in the development of this festival. Um, my name's Lauren Lead. Uh, I've been a, a graphic artist for God forever. And I started doing digital work in the late 80s. Um, I found out about the, the festival and I brought my kids here. Uh, they were some of the children dancing at the foot of the stage for, you know, years and years. And uh, I met Gary as a collaborator on some projects. And uh, we both basically started uh, to talk about uh, approaching the, the festival uh, with a poster idea. You want to take it from there? So My name's Gary Beam. I ditto to what Lauren said. When basically the early part of it. Uh, for me, I just happened to stumble across the event, being new to the committee, and was rather surprised that such an event was going on. Um, like Lauren indicated, we both later approached the committee to see about developing some artwork, a uh, poster in mind. My background is graphics as well, and. I met Lauren at one of the local print shops uptown where he was working. As time went on and we get past the first couple of posters and the first couple of committees, I became a committee member in 1994, a director, vice president, uh, promotional director, and continued all the way till 2011 and then retired. Okay, so before you two approached the festival organizers, they did not have a full-size poster. Correct. They had a, just a handbill. Yes. Yeah, we had been inspired by uh, the Mount Hood Jazz Festival's beautiful posters, and we felt that Cathedral Park was such a, a world-class event that it deserved to have a poster, a full-color poster as well, to represent the, the quality of the music and, and the artists that were performing. and. Uh, we decided to approach the committee, and we just uh, cold call dropped in on the committee. Uh, I did know Sh uh, Sharon Rosso a little bit, but uh, that was the only person I really was familiar with. And we dropped the idea of uh, we would love to do a poster for the event. And I vividly remember the smiles that came to their faces because they said, well, we would love to have a poster but we have no budget. We have no money for the poster. Uh -huh. And this is our last year. This is the last year that we plan on doing the festival. We've done 12 festivals. It's been a good run, you know, and I'm sure they never expected to see us again. <laughs> so that yeah, that's true. So uh, we got to work. We okay. didn't take no for an answer. And we went out and talked to other vendors that we knew through our graphics work and persuaded them to at least give us a break, give us a chance, try us out. And they did. And the result of that is the first Cathedral Park Jazz Festival poster for the 11th festival. Um, it's a collaboration. Uh, the bridge photo was taken by a photographic enthusiast, um, Angela Jones, and then Lauren and I put together the composition. Lauren at that time was heavily involved in airbrushing, and it's representative of that, and just one thing led to another, and this is the first baby, uh -huh. so to speak. So that was 1991? Correct. Okay. Beautiful. And then, the year after that, you selected a featured musician. Yeah, we, uh, we actually didn't expect to ever do another poster, but uh, Michael Paul, who was uh, one of the original board members, took this first poster we had done and went around to all the festival sponsors and got commitments to do another festival. And with, with that, uh, we realized that you know we were back in action again. Uh, the original poster was done in a program called Adobe Illustrator, um, which is 
It's a vector program. It doesn't use pixels like a photo program. Therefore, it doesn't require a huge computer. And we were working on our own computers the first year. And to do a full-size image on a computer at that time uh, was really pushing the computers to the max. We basically always seemed to be dragging the computers down to their knees uh, to get the effects that we were going for. But the second year, uh, I had been working um, for Fred Meyer Advertising and as a freelancer and a designer named Tim Tomasi had just left and got a job at LDR, which was a, a digital equipment company that sold all of this digital high-end gear that made it possible for us to raise the quality of the poster significantly. So we did that with the Leroy Vinegar uh, poster and Michael Paul did the, the picture of Leroy in the studio. And I had done a rough design of a bass player standing in the beautiful lighting underneath the bridge. That was the idea for the first poster with a performer in it. And um, So that was natural sunlight? It looks like it. The, the background is natural sunlight, but Leroy was photographed in the studio oh against a, a green screen mm -hmm. and we were able to knock out the studio background and put him in as a layer and basically that's what our, our posters were doing we were using uh, Photoshop you know which was a state-of-the-art photo manipulation program now Photoshop is a common term but at the time uh, it had only been out for about a year it was a very new uh, piece of software and do you want to tell the story about Leroy's objections to... <laughs> uh, Leroy got a little um, persnickety with the request of, could you turn this way, hold the base that way, until we could get the image the way we wanted it. Uh, that issue also came about with some of the other later posters and some of the musicians. Uh, that, just part of the process. The yeah, funny thing is that Leroy always played bass sitting down and we didn't feel like it was really going to work, you know, this beautiful image of a bass player in this wonderful light of the bridge, you know, sitting in a chair just didn't seem to have the power. And we are very happy at the end when he loved the poster. Yeah, he did. And this is also, um, Tim Tomasi knew Bill McConaughey, who was into hand calligraphy. And this jazz image at the top is the Bill McConaughey jazz calligraphy. Of course, we enhanced it with brush gold and some highlights. And this wound up becoming a element of all the other posters. It also moved into the t-shirts as well. Um, and just other imagery of the event over time. Interesting. It set the standard, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's a, a beautiful rendering of the word jazz. So that was kind of like the logo then for yes. up till 2011? Uh, which was on correct. The, okay. And then this would be the 1993 poster, George Mitchell. Uh -huh. um, you can see that the jazz calligraphy is still the primary element. And this is rather anecdotal as well because when we first photographed George Mitchell, he sat at a black piano. Oh, interesting. And when we started composing it, the black piano didn't work and we had to call him up and request him to come back out for another photo shoot at a white piano. So this persnickettiness of <laughs> Musicians and artists seem to be a early trend to get the subject matter and contents of the poster the way the artist had hoped and right. envisioned. Well, yeah. So with the, with the keyboard like that, I mean, it's a it's a wonderful visual. How did you come up with that idea, and how do you agree on what to do? It's a collaboration. Yeah, we've um, always really worked back and forth. I had just started working in 3D programs. Yeah. And I realized that this was a, a wonderful opportunity because um, 
the Mountain Hood Festival would always use the piano, you know, in some oh, way, right. shape, or form. Sure. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of a a, a, a takeoff on that, but instead of just having a piano in the picture, we didn't want to be copying that way. So the idea of having the whole keyboard bend around to the horizon uh, became the idea. And it took Gary's artistic uh, abilities to come up with a perspective. I was able to do the 3D part, but with special effects, it's one thing to uh, have the idea but to have it merge seamlessly into a photo is very hard. Mm -hmm. And Gary was able to uh, sketch out the perspective that I was able to follow in the 3D program. And the last element was we started working with a, a graphic artist named Russ Mahler. And he had just bought a, a brand new uh, top of the line Macintosh uh, workstation had a big screen monitor too. <laughs> it's, we'd always been working on these little 13 inch monitors trying to work on these huge posters and he had a, a beautiful radius uh, 21 inch monitor but making the water of the photograph look like it was rippling up against the keys Russ was painting in that effect he was actually using a brush and painting the water reflections into the keyboard and all of these little details, we loved making these effects seamless so it felt like you were just experiencing, you know, the whole scene. Yeah. And anecdotally, the Mount Hood Festival poster of that year had a keyboard as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we released our poster first. <laughs> so yeah, it but was. They, they, they work on that stuff way yeah. ahead of time. So it seems to us that pursuing the level of the Mount Hood Festival of Jazz posters, we had achieved it. Yeah, for a fraction of the money, too. You know, we, we had nothing compared to the, the sponsorships of the festival, and I, I feel like. The, the companies that supported us, the sponsors that supplied the plates and the films, you know, for all these years, uh, Revere Graphic, LDR, uh, Mollet Prunny, I mean, there's so many wonderful sponsors that stepped up to support Cathedral Park and... Uh, and the poster project over its life. Yeah. Much of the services, other than an occasional printing bill, were donated by the service companies over the years. Yeah. I want to comment too about it was a wonderful side effect but getting to know the musicians you know working with them photographing them it uh, getting to go into their world for a while and uh, letting them see the world of you know digital art the, the world of, of special effects of what it's what they had to go through you know, without realizing, we would tell them what background they were going to be in to try to help create that. But the, uh, it was really wonderful getting to, uh, to know some of our uh, most prominent musicians in town. That was, it was always a, a special part of the project. Isn't this one of your favorites? Oh yeah, I was going to ask you, what, what is your favorite poster? So you're holding, it appears to be Ron Steen. That's Ron Steen. Uh -huh. This would be the fourth festival and this would be the festival that myself and I became part of the committee in 1994. Mm -hmm. Michael Paul had shut it down. The committee got tired, a lot of issues. Uh, and so found a couple of people and we started it up again and saved it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I loved about this, there was the original idea was, you know, the bridge and having it look like it was raining down uh, on Romstein. And this was the first dark image. And I wanted to have the, like these rainbow flares coming off the blurs of the drumstick to capture the energy of a drum solo. And the whole poster came together incredibly fast, except for these wonderful neon glows and that that effect took almost as long as the entire poster because it looked so clunky and Russ finally went in there and made masks that were the right shape and then we would 
paint with the airbrush, a digital airbrush into the mask, which is exactly the way you would do it if you were painting an illustration, you know. So that was, you know, we always collaborated and I think Gary, Russ and I managed to find uh, this uh, give and take. No one was feeling like they had to own the entire thing if someone had a better idea on how to approach it. Uh, it was wonderful working together like that. Uh -huh. Ron was actually performing when that photograph was taken. It was an action shot. He was action moving. Shot. Yeah. And that was a, a Michael Paul photograph also. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then yeah. we got into, hey, you want to sign the poster? Yeah, so they started signing, yeah. And these wound up becoming what we identified as the backstage posters that mm -hmm. many of the artists who performed at the event signed. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I'm sure they sold well to the public. No, not really. <laughs> to our shock. Uh, <laughs> we utilized it with hopefully it could be a fundraiser. Uh-huh. Yet and people were hesitant to at them at that time to even cough up five bucks for a poster. Really? So pretty much what it wound up being utilized is to thank sponsors and supporters of the festival and it, it worked um, very well. Yeah, it, we also would plaster the posters around jazz clubs and, and record stores and things like that. We would put a stack on the counter. It was great for publicity. Uh-huh. So, um, is there any... Oh, that's interesting. What is that now? This is the Dan Palmer collage. Oh, it's a collage? Yeah, predominantly initiated by Lauren's concept. Actually, it was Russ. Oh. Was it? Yeah, this was Russ's uh, idea. Yeah, I see a face with sunglasses. Yeah, he did yeah. The, the little rose. tearing out paper with a rose in the background. And uh, this was, uh, the idea was that we would all come up with different pieces of it. And... Uh, and see how they would all go together. Uh -huh. And that's why this one is so uniquely different than the others because it, it was uh, uh, all of us taking parts and, and using them into a, an image without really having an idea out front where it was going. Mm -hmm. And it is the only poster. Oh, that you printed on the t-shirt? That printed on a t-shirt. Here, grab the hand. Oh, sure. At the time. Dan loved it and it was rather interesting so everybody wanted to the park with Dan on their chest. This <laughs> shirt has never been worn. It's brand new and a couple of years ago when Dan was playing at the event, oh, wow. he I caught him and said, hey Dan, I got a couple of these shirts. You want to sign it for me? He looked at me and said, yeah, and he goes, hey man, I burned through all mine years ago. You mind if I have one? And I told him, no. Sure, take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, so what I'd like to do is get this to the 40th and have oh. them raffle it off oh, cool. in some capacity. Sure. It's a special shirt. It's brand new. It's uh -huh. never been never worn. Never been worn with Dan Balmer? Yeah. Uh, and it's the last really? one. Really? So there again, more poster signing. And today, what, 21 posters? over 21 years. It was a great run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was wonderful to be a part of the, the festival. The history, and, yeah. Uh, right. These are just some of the other ones. You know, they all have their oh, special yeah. flavor, uh -huh. featured artists. Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, we've been talking about the development and the history of the posters of Cathedral Park Jazz Festival. Our guests here are Gary Bean, Lauren Lee, the graphic artists that created these wonderful posters. These will be available online during our live stream of the 2020 Cathedral Park Jazz Festival. These are uh, works of art and collector's items and historic mementos of this 40-year festival, Cathedral Park Jazz Festival.